Hello, Fearless Gamers! Matt here for Fearless Games, and today I'm doing another entry in the book corner. And today's book review is going to be of Angels Exterminatus by Graham McNeil. Now, this is the story of Paterbo, or Paterbo, however you wish you wish to pronounce it, the Primarch the Primarch of the Iron Warriors. The Horus Heresy has just kicked in the full gear. Events from the um, Fallen Angels has already happened, and he is br and he is um, confronted by or confronted's a bad word. He is he is um, he is an audience is requested of him by the Third Legion and their Primarch Falgrim, and he's told and he goes to him and tells him about this ancient planet, this crone world, that is in the Eye of Terror, that houses a weapon, or weapons, that can turn the tide of the Horus Heresy into Horus's favor completely. And it is a device, it is a series of weapons, or weapon, it's really like, kind of switches back and forth, called the Angel Extermeratus, the ultimate weapon that will ensure Horus's um, victory in this war. And so they go off to the um, Eye of Terror to try and achieve, um, retrieve these weapons before the um, Loyalist Legions can get to them. But little do they know, they are being pursued by a band of Iron Hands who wish to track them down and stop them, not only to make sure that Horus doesn't gain the advantage, but to get revenge for what happened to their Primarch. Or Primarch, however you forget. I'm going to say it differently every time. I apologize. Now, to be honest, by far, this is the best book I have ever read for this channel. Out of all of them, by far my favorite. It's got great action, great storytelling, the characters are well developed, and despite the fact that you know how events happen in the history, they actually leave you on the edge of your seat, making you wonder how are things going to play out. Will it? There are times, even though you know who, what's going to happen in terms of the chronological order of events and how things go on, you're still sitting there going, "What happens? What happens next? Is are, is this going to happen? Is that going to happen?" And that is great. The fact that this book, despite the fact that I know how the fate of most of the characters in this book play out. It still got me pimped up. There were times where like, is it gonna happen? What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? What's gonna what's gonna happen? Is he gonna succeed? Is he gonna fail? There it keeps you on the edge of your seat, which is great. The characters are very well rounded, and like in Fallen Angels, the Primarchs are humanized. They're superhuman. They have elements of them where you can believe that they're real and they're not these Deus Ex machina beings that no matter what happens, they'll always succeed or everything will always turn out into their favor. And there is just some great new characters that if they are, like, there's this character for the Raven Guard, if he is not in their fluff and he's not an established character, he should be, because this character was awesome. And I'm not a fan of the Raven Guard, and this guy made me a fan of the Raven Guard. In fact, as I just mentioned in another video, I did this commission for this one guy, and one of the characters was made into a Raven Guard, and I actually did posing and such for him to represent this character. It was inspired by that character in this book, and it is great. We do see a bit of um, Lucius the Eternal, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, of the um, Emperor's Children, and plus um, and plus another character I forget his n I forget his name, but it's the special character Apothecary for the Chaos Space Marines. Um, I'll put his name here on credits here. And you get a great insight to these characters, how they think, what their opinions are, and you get a really nice insight to all of it, in a sense. Um, what's really neat is also you get to see a nice perspective of the Emperor's Children from, other, from another Chaos Legion, which is really neat to see, and you really get a nice insight to Protarbo's, um motives behind joining Horus, and how his views are of the Emperor, and his, actually his opinion of what they're doing versus those that are loyal to the Emperor. It's really great. The story, again, like some of Gav Thrope's novels, you don't need to have a perfect encyclopedia knowledge of terminology for Warhammer 40,000. You can get by with not knowing 
a good chunk of it and still understand what's going on and what they're talking about. And it shows off some really cool stuff that I never would have imagined being um, available or existing in the current universe. And like I said, the Primarchs, the Primarchs are told, are presented in a way that makes them more believable as characters and not these just we win buttons. Um, and again, on the other flip side with the, what you see with the Iron Warriors, their slow, their descent into the realm of chaos and becoming the chapter that they are known to known to us today as or legion if you prefer same with the um emperor's children you get an idea of what they were like before they went full-on slanish war worshiping um which is really neat and you kind of see how dramatically different the differences are between fulgrim and his legion and how in ways they are kind of like the same and in a sense when you see them you get this really nice um opposite end of the spectrum in terms of how a worshiper of slanish can go and just the reading was just so good i could never put this book down and the only thing that kept this review from coming up any sooner was just how long it takes me to read but the whole time i was on the edge of my seat I already knew some of the things that happened by, in terms of I knew what events were supposed to happen and where this falls into it. So there were parts of it like most people who know, who are big into the lore, were aware of and only knew how certain things were going to out, were going to turn out. But that didn't change the fact that it was very on the edge of your seat and the writer puts implements certain elements into the story that allows him that allows McNeil to write what he wants but allow himself to keep the canon untouched so it's really neat it's not one of these like really that's how you do this come on that's stupid it's more a okay clever very clever it i approve it, it there there's a lot of things that happen that you can be you can approve happening because it's written in a way that makes sense and allows for some leeway which i think plays into the whole keeping that pent up um anticipation to find out what happens and kind of giving you that sense of not knowing what's going to happen even though in the back of your mind you know how certain events are supposed to play out so you can piece together how things are supposed to go which is great and the beginning is well done the middle keeps you going and the ending is just great and another thing that i also liked about this book is is when it jumps between stories that they're following it's always consistent and the payoff always comes back again by the next chapter so let's just so in one example they may do something in chapter four and then it ends on a cliffhanger then chapter five will be events on another side of the story leading up to where chapter four's cliffhanger ended and then some past it so it's never an event where something happens in chapter four then chapter seven they go back to it and you have to hope that you remember what they were talking about and when it's supposed to happen everything st stays in a flow that keeps it consistent without it feeling like oh we're going back to this i just got interested in this event type of thing so definitely if you have not read this book yet you gotta read this book this is a must read in my opinion and that's all i can say for right now so thank you all for watching if you haven't like us that way you can keep tabs on when these um, book reviews come out like us on facebook so you can get more um information of what's going on and again if you have any recommendations or if you have your own opinion on the book feel free to leave a comment that i would like to know what you guys think of the story if you've read it already or if there's any books that you think i should um read or that i might like definitely leave me a comment and i will see if i can get to um get a copy of it and read it so again Thank you all for watching, and until next time, fearless- Hey there, fearless gamers! One last thing before we end this video. I enjoyed this book so much that me and the other fearless have decided we are going to share the love with somebody on our channel. So we're going to give away a copy of Angel Exterminatus to one of you lucky viewers. 
How do you enter in to get a chance to win this book? Simply subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, then go on to our Twitter account. Yeah, we actually still have a Twitter account. We finally found someone who knows how to Twitter to run it for us. So what you're going to do is, is you're going to go to our twitter.com slash fearless games. There's a link in the description. Follow us and then tell us on that account what's your favorite Book Corner episode thus far with the hashtag fearless games. Then once we hit 110 followers, we'll select one lucky winner to receive this book. And we're probably going to do more of these contests later on since this does seem to be one of the more popular channels on the, um, the popular video series on the channel. And so keep a lookout for these. So if you don't win this one, you might win the next one. So who knows? So again, thank you all for watching. We'll put up another video with the official contest rules later on. And until next time, fearless gamers, take care.